bit of a tidy up this morning. There's some potholes up here in the yard here and uh, concrete's dead expensive so Sam's just going to put some road planings in it. We might spray a bit of diesel on them, try and roll them in, get it to set. I had to tighten up there around the combine because when the header arrives, we want to be able to get in the shed and also when they PDI it, get the order on it. And then I've got some, the Royal College of Defence studies calling up tomorrow to have a look around the farm as well, so we just want the place looking tidy. Just spraying a little bit of diesel on these planings now. Makes them go sticky, sand whackers them in. They should set like tarmac. It's not a bad repair for the yard then. Back in the combine out, we're going to fill it up with diesel and then um, put it in the other shed for when the header comes. I can't believe how dusty it is already. This is, this is what the mini mailer was good for. I can drive in here now, pick that up, and go and put it where I want it, which will be tight as well. Yeah, so I've been able to swing in here this six metre gap and lift them up on top of there. Unfortunately, that cage isn't wide enough to reach the wall the other side. So I'm gonna have to put some skids or a plank of wood on it and then can leave that up there out the way then. So they don't get damaged. This up here is just dead space. So we like to store all sorts of bits and bobs, all the signs for the sunflower maze under there somewhere, full of dust. You know, just trading these seats of plywood now so they sit over nice and flush. Then we can obviously put pallets and things like that on top. So, got some chalk, marked it out, cut it with a circle saw now. We've got a bee's nest here, in that hessian. Don't know if you can see them. Not really now. <coughs> but I'm gonna move it with the pallet forks. I think you can see them buzzing around on it. So, I'm gonna try and get it on here. Put it somewhere safe. If we go slowly, hopefully they'll follow. Yep. Put it, put it at the back of the yard there, out of the way. Hopefully they'll either move somewhere better, or they'll just stay where they are, and uh, they're safe out of everyone's way. That's where it's dead handy, because it fits in here. And then I've got all them up there now, out of the way, so they're not going to get back over, driven over or damaged any further. This ram leak seems to be getting worse, so I'm going to take it apart and see if I can fix it. Or at least take it away and get it resealed. Got the ram off, it wasn't too bad. I've got some of them bungs I've got the other week put in there now, stop the oil flowing out while it's, the pipes are off. The, this is the check valve on the ram, so this is what holds the pressure if it was to fail. And then you undo these pipes here, but you've got to watch with these because they can squirt oil out anyway. I just undid them slowly with a rag wrap round them. And luckily they didn't get me. This O-ring though, to be fair, in there uh, has gone on one of them. I've just had a mystery parcel delivered and a letter. I'll read it to you. Hi Ollie, as promised on LinkedIn. I've closed a couple of banners for your workshop, both from a Ford GT endurance racing program. I was working on at the time of the Le Mans 24 hour, which is part of the FIA World Endurance Championships and one from the 24 hour Daytona US Endurance Racing Championships. Unfortunately, I couldn't find Subaru ones, but I've sent you a pair of Subaru World Rally Mechanics overalls from 1997. Keep up the good work with your blogs. It takes me back to my childhood farm in Cumbria where I learned to drive on a David Brown 996. We had a 990. Unfortunately, my granddad sold out working for someone else. When leaving school, it wasn't an option. So I got a more well-paid career and progressed into traveling the world and getting paid for the passion of motorsport. All the best, Mike Horn. Well, thank you very much, Mike, because now we've, I've got a pair of Subaru official team pro drive overalls and also some banners to put in the workshop. So I'll put them up when we get the cherry picker back. So thanks, Mike. Obviously, I've got it off. Now I'm just unscrewing the end cap. So, like that. Just turning this, and it's coming with it. Then we'll pull it out, we'll see how with the seals in here. Well, I think it is the seals in here to be fair, it's gone, so we'll see how easy they are to change. Right, I've unscrewed the end cap, which is that, and I've put it back on here now. I've got the plunger out. There's a the cylinder. 
So how a ram works is you want the ram to go in, you pump oil into here, and then that pushes that plunger that way, and then it pulls the rod in. So you put oil in that side of the cylinder, which is that bit, it pushes oil that way, and pushes it out. You know, I've got it parked now, so the seals and everything are gone, but I've got to take this end cap off first, and now that could be a pain, so I'm gonna try, if not, I'll have to take it somewhere. Took the seals out the end of the plunger, and I was gonna weld the nut to it, but anyway, we just tried it with the filter wrench first. And it worked. So I unscrew the plunger now, take this middle cap off, see if I can trick this change of seals in that, and then sort it. Just looking at this plunger that's on the off the ram, it's got little rollers and a little piece of rubber, and that's what locks it on, stops it on doing. See if that will fix them little bumps there that have damaged the seals. My dad's been to the dealership fuse, picked these seals up, they're all in now. Just waiting for that to go off and then I can get that built back up in the morning, put it back on and that's all done then. So I'm happy with that then because obviously that had the oil leak and it was the only thing really left to do on it. So then it's complete other than little an hour worth of wiring the lights up. Still waiting on the bits for this because obviously they sent some wrong. So hopefully they'll arrive in the next couple of days, get that back on, on and back out the way. We've been putting the trailers in the yard in the shed just uh, they've been filling up with water so we put them in the shed now we've got a little bit of space because the rape store is empty so we put the combine into there and just stuck these in here make the yard look a little bit tidier as well because we've obviously got these visitors tomorrow james has done a bit of chipping this afternoon i've got some more of this stuff coming can't put this through the shipper because it just turns to rope so we'll have to put that in the skip out of the way compost that it's like the mini Merlot needs a bath. Hopefully I can get out tomorrow with the sprayer anyway. And get some more liquid fertilizer on. But it's just, I didn't want to make a mess today. It's just been too wet. We've been dead lucky. We've had about, we've had no rain since midnight. We had about seven mil last night. But there's other people that have had, they had about 10 mil this morning in an hour, which is obviously a lot of rain. This was Saturday's quiz question. What are these for? They're basically to hold the air pipes to stop them getting damaged. No one noticed that I never told you yesterday what they were for. So um, whether everyone guessed it right or didn't realize, I don't know. But yeah, you get the, you get a pipe and then it plugs in. You pull the clip, push it in and it clips it and holds it in. It's a two-handed job, so. Whereas, because the curly pipes, you can just kind of throw them up on them and they don't dangle on the floor anyway. Well, they should really be stowed properly and then they don't get dirt in them and start blocking things up. Yesterday's quiz question was, what are these? Loads of people did get it right. I think they recognised the green paint in the background or the shape of these. It's the feeder house on the combine. So, dead easy one. Normally you'd have chains on it, but this year we've, 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 it was an option to have rubber. They're supposed to be quieter and last longer. We did used to have trouble with the chain snapping. Don't know what happens when one of them snaps. It looks a big job, but apparently they don't. They give a bit more than a chain because the rubber, they can take a shock load better. So, We'll wait and see. Not really a quiz question today, but uh, one is what's your percent today? I'm about 85, 90. Been a nice day. No, well, probably 95 today. It's been a good day. It's been a bright sun and that ram came apart pretty easy. But I'm thinking of putting stickers on the back of the trailer saying, if I'm going unusually slow, I may be stuck behind a cyclist. So overtake with caution. Does anyone think that's a good idea? Or can anyone think of any better words to put on the back of them? If you, if you do, leave a comment, and, um, or if you think it's a good idea, tell me. If you don't think it's a good idea, tell me. Or if you've got a better idea, tell me in the comments. Big pile of crushed stone now. The chipper, uh, chipper. <laughs> the crusher now is going off higher. It's over there now. It's going back tomorrow. So I don't know how many tons it's done, but I would say a few thousand. So that's pretty good. We've got plenty there. We're gonna screen some. We've got some drainage stone as well. And then we'll also, what we take out will be brilliant for tracks and different things like that. Quick update on the bee's nest. I'll put it at the back of the yard on top of this pile of wood chip and these bales. They've gone. They've obviously decided to make a nest somewhere else, so that's pretty good. But apparently they were, they were um, I've forgotten the name of them, but they only normally nest 50, or 100, 50 to 100 often, which is nothing in bee terms, because normally Connolly's like 80 to 100,000, I think, which is what would be in a beehive. Drill's not turned up today, might be tomorrow. They've got to sort out the transport and they didn't get the paperwork to me in time to do the thing so that I could do the payment as well. But hopefully that's all here now. That can be sorted in the morning. And if they sort the transport, it may arrive tomorrow. But 
the people in the dealership, I don't think, realised. Well, there isn't really an urgency for it, but I'd like to get it here. I'd like to get to know it while we're not too busy. And then obviously we've got some sunflowers to drill. So if it dries up this week, we can do that with it as well. Hopefully this next week, they'll start building the Bateman as well. So I'll have pictures and daily, up well, not daily updates, but updates of how that's working. Don't forget, if you're not subscribed, click subscribe. Also share it on Facebook, tell your friends, because really I like to have 20,000 subscribers by the time the new one of these arrives in July. And um, I think we're only like 13 and a half thousand, 13, six or something. So we need to keep it growing. And it's up to you lot to do that for me. I thought it'd be a good idea to hire out these. I spoke to someone that did it. They said everyone will come back damaged. The correct. So this one's been out four times. It's been, sorry, this one's been out three times. It's been damaged four times. So it's now missing a mirror. And it's got a bit of a scar in the back. You can see, see that scar there. I mean, it had that previous scar from the time before. And it's also had that light knocked off twice. Once by Andy in the workshop and once by someone else that hired it. So it's been out three times, that one. <laughs> it's been damaged four. And then we've also got another one here that hasn't even been out yet. Oh no, it might've been out once. And uh, that's like that light knocked off and a little bit of a scratch there. The, we're gonna put side markers on the back that are flexible so you can see them in the mirrors. People just aren't used to driving a longer vehicle, especially one that's got like a tail swing. So that's how that's happening. Well, I packed actually this one. Someone, um, another, another motor home or a van hit them. Knock this off and knock that off. But it has been to Stornoway Island in Scotland and all the way back and that's the only damage. So that's uh, pretty good because that's a, that's a long way that from here. That's about it for today. Tomorrow, who knows what it'll bring. Obviously we've got these interesting people coming in the morning. They have Royal College of Defence Studies for a visit. So I think it's 40 of them, two coach loads. So that should be interesting. And also maybe the drill will come. I don't know. I'll have to get on the phone in the morning, make sure I can sort everything out and see what's going on. So thanks for watching. If you're not subscribed, click subscribe. Watch up here for another video. Watch here to, to subscribe. And it'd be great as well if you could share the video about the cycling on your own Facebook or whatever, because the more reach we get, the more car drivers will get educated as well. That's the other thing. But also I think cyclists do need to take a little bit of responsibility for their safety as well. So see you tomorrow.